Hello everyone and welcome to The Good Old Gamer. So today's video is actually brought to you by a supporter. This is from Panicapa. So if you are a regular on the channel and you join the live streams, he's typically in there and he wanted me to go ahead and test out my current kind of budget 360 millimeter AIO, which is the Enermax Aquafusion 3, I think it's called. Um, I'll go ahead and show some B-roll here, so this way you guys can see it. It looks very pretty. I got it for 90 bucks. However, he has one of the Arctic Liquid Freezer 360 AIOs, and he's not very thrilled with the performance, and considering how big a deal these guys are, or rather, these guys are, with a lot of the tech tubers out there, he wanted me to go ahead and test this out. So he went ahead and paid to have one of these sent over, so I want to thank him for that. And uh, yeah, I was actually really interested in seeing how good these are as well, since they are recommended by a lot of people out there. Is it better than just a regular plain Jane budget AIO? Well, that's what we're going to find out here today. So stick around and let's check it out. All right, so jumping on over to my test system, which this is actually one of my main systems. Not really sure if I want to make it my living room gaming PC or keep it as my work PC. Still up in the air, but either way, uh, this is one of my machines here using the Enermax uh, Aquafusion. Links are down below if you want to check any of this stuff out, by the way. But I'm running the Intel Core i5 13600K. Um, as you can see here, it's running at 1.3 volts. That's because it's got big V droop. Under load, it's gonna run at 1.26 volts, I believe. We'll double check that. Um, we have the SA at 1.3. I'm running the DDR5, if it's in here, at 7200. Here's the timings, the primaries and whatever. Tightened up pretty good. I'm, I've been very happy with it, super stable. Um, I'm using a Z690G Strix motherboard. So that's the reason why I can't really go too much higher on the memory but performance is still better than DDR4, albeit not by as much as, well, if you're running 8,000. But either way, this is a fully tuned system. That's why I wanted to go ahead and show you this. It's in hardware info. We're also gonna use hardware info to monitor uh, the cooler and the CPU temperatures. So one of the biggest ones that he was uh, concerned with was in Y Cruncher. So we're gonna start off with that, see how this does, if there's any thermal throttling, anything of that nature, as this is an extremely heavy workload on the CPU. By the way, all E cores and everything are enabled as well. So let's see. Okay, so popping this open, you can see here we're running the uh, 13600K P cores. I have two cores running at 5.6 gigahertz. The, ru the rest are at 5.5. This is what's needed to keep it at the 1.25 on this particular motherboard. And then 4.3 gigahertz on the E cores. And then we're running a ring clock of 4.8. Now, of course you can run a little bit higher, but I'm a big fan of the 1.25 voltage. And this is what's achievable with this motherboard and RAM setup. So that's why it is what it is. You can push higher, but in reality, this has been the sweet spot in my opinion. Anyways, let's go ahead and run some Y Cruncher and we'll see how these temperatures hold up using this budget cooler. Alrighty guys, and away we go with the stress test. And this seems to be uh, more in line with what we would be expecting. So we can see here that the uh, CPU is now up to 77 degrees Celsius. This is just starting. I'm gonna go ahead and let this run for a little while. I figure about five to 10 minutes, and then we'll see where we're at in terms of temperature at that point in time. All right, and while this is running, I also wanted to show the actual core voltage is actually running at 1.243 volts, 1.25. Like I said, for me, with Raptor Lake and Alder Lake, and actually most CPUs, this is kind of the sweet spot between uh, you know, performance and power. It just kind of, at least on modern CPUs, seems to be a very nice happy spot where you know the heat's not gonna be too bad, power's kept a little bit under control. You're gonna get most of the clock speed. You might lose out on one to 200 megahertz. If you're one of those people that can't live without those one to 200 megahertz and the imperceivable performance difference, well, have at 1.35 volts. Godspeed, happy uh, happy trails. I'm happy here. Just in case if you were wondering what voltage you should probably run your CPU at, for high performance, 1.25 uh, on most AMD and Intel CPUs, you're gonna be pretty good. 
Alrighty, so we're about five minutes or so in now. And uh, the second test that it ran, this was a lot more difficult than the first and obviously this one as well. Um, because on that one, we did hit up to 91 Celsius, which is pretty high. But remember, this is a uh, like worst case scenario. This is unrealistic. No actual program is going to be this difficult. Even something like Handbrake isn't anywhere near this demanding on your CPU. Video uh, encoding, CPU encode, like, Nothing is this demanding. This is synthetic as synthetic gets. So the absolute fictitious worst case scenario. All right, so scroll on down. So the absolute max power that this thing was hitting was 208 watts. Um, as you could see just a second ago, it was over 200. So these do push quite a lot of power. Um, if you're using something like a 13900K or a 14900K, you, or even a 13700K, an eight core, uh, but definitely the ones with the eight cores and 16 threads, you're gonna be closer to 250 watts. So if you are using an i9, you are gonna be drawing more power even at these voltages, simply because the, there's just more cores, there's more things going, and that just means more heat. Um, so yeah, you could definitely see where this might be close to thermal throttling, but uh, at least with the 13600K, no, no issues at all. As you can see, the minimum here on the one core did seem to drop to 4.3, but that was likely just, you know, when it was trying to sleep before we went going. But as you can see here, all the other P cores are at 5.5 or 5.6 at a minimum, which is where they're supposed to be. And then the E cores didn't drop at all. So yeah, right now we can take a look. Temperatures, we're on another test. CPU package 85C. How much power are we drawing right now? 175 watts. This is pretty much typical. This is what I'm used to seeing out of this CPU under a stress test. So I would say this fourth test that we're on appears to be about uh, normal. The second test was obviously a little bit more strenuous uh, than even other synthetics, but this seems to be about what I'm used to seeing. So yeah, it has no problem cooling down. Well, the Enermax Aqua Fusion has no problems keeping the 13600K overclocked cool. And like I said, even a 14900K, or a, I guess that's not out yet, but 13900K, 14900K, it'll still do the job under synthetics, but it'll have absolutely no issues under uh, you know actual real world programs. Because remember when you're running games, um, the 13600K only draws about 90 watts, 85 to 90 watts. And that's usually in more modern, more CPU demanding games. So like older games, it's gonna draw even less. So it's, it's really a non-issue when it comes to gaming. But uh, okay, so now that we have the numbers here, so the worst case scenario on this is 90 Celsius, which is not bad. Typically somewhere in the 80s, seems to be pretty common. Obviously the average they're showing here doesn't have it before it's warmed up. Uh, so we can ignore that. But overall, this cooler does the job, works just fine. And like I said, even if you had like an eight core 16 thread or eight core plus 16 core, it'll get to that high number, but it should still keep you under thermal throttling under synthetic uh, stress tests. But all right, let me go ahead and swap out the cooler. We'll check out the Arctic Freezer, the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 360 ARGB. I gotta be accurate. By the way, affiliate links are down below. And uh, I'll even give you my subjective opinion as obviously I haven't tested this yet. Um, whether or not I like the aesthetics. It's got the little fan on the AIO thing, which looks a little interesting. I like the cooler that's in there now. I think it fits the build really well. I don't think that this one will quite as well. But anyways, let's see how good it actually is or is not. Alrighty guys, I'm back. So for you, this was like half a second. Uh, for me, it took the entire time to replace the water cooling unit. Um, so, all right, so first things first, I do wanna give you some quick impressions. This thing's easier to install than the AquaFusion because of the pre-built cable management. You just need one uh, five volt, three pin ARGB and one four pin fan header and it runs the whole show. That's actually really nice. Typically with the cheaper AIOs, which, you know, me being the budget guy, I usually go that route. You have to route all the cables yourself, manage them yourselves and all of that. So that's actually a very nice feature. I did want to mention that because if you're somebody that doesn't want to screw around with that, technically that's me. I, I think it's worth the money not to screw with it, assuming this thing works. Uh, but yeah, that's a really nice feature that uh, I really liked 
because I was like, I can set this up a lot faster. Made my life easier. So I figured I'd mention that. So good job, Arctic, and everybody else out there making AIOs. Do, do that. I want two plugs. That's it. That's all I want. Uh, so anyways, let's go ahead and take a look and see what we're looking at here. Um, bu -bu -bu -bum. So temperatures, we look like we're running 34, 37. Okay, this is idle. This doesn't really matter. Uh, I can't remember where the other one was, but this seems good. Uh, I would assume that this is probably right in line, but let's go ahead and start stress testing this and then see how it does. All right, so the fans have kicked in fully now. We seem to be around 73 Celsius. This is the first test. This is li the lighter uh, of the test. The next one that's coming up is actually the heaviest test. And uh, right now we're at like 158 watts package power. So we've got about another 30 watts to go, 25, 30 watts to go. Uh, and then we'll see exactly how it does. But I would say that this is running, looks like it's running slightly better than my other one. If I remember correctly, we were right around 80 with the Aqua Fusion. Um, so yeah, we'll let this go for another minute. Once the second test kicks in, we'll spot check that one. Alrighty, so the second test is kicked in and we jumped straight up to 85 Celsius. So, all right, um, we'll let this go here for a little bit. Remember we hit 90, 91 at the absolute maximum. It looks like the Arctic Freezer does seem to be a few Celsius lower than the Aqua Fusion, about five or so, uh, somewhere between four and five Celsius, at least at this point. Uh, but we're up to 86, so there, there's 5C there. We're going to go ahead and let this test finish up and then uh, see how it ends up. Alrighty, so the second test passed, and as you can see, we're still at 86C at the maximum. So we are showing 5C lower than we saw in the Aqua Fu Fusion from Enermax. Um, so I'm gonna let this run for a couple more minutes. So it's got about the same amount of time as we put on the other one, uh, just to see where we're at. But it does look like this is a little bit better. Um, and then we'll wrap up the video with my final thoughts once I have all the information. All right, so it looks like this third test is actually uh, the hardest one that we run through. So this one actually did bump us up. We did hit 87C. So now we're in the realm of like, eh, I mean, it could just be, you know, the fact that it's got fresh thermal paste on it. 88, we just bumped up another one. So, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and say, it's a bit of a nothing burger. So let's go ahead and wrap up this video. Well, alrighty guys, there we go. Panic button, you now have your information. The liquid freezer does not appear to be better, not really, uh, relative to just any other 360 AIO. Um, seems to be about on par. It is coming down, what, 2C lower, one to two. Um, like I said, that could be down to just using fresh thermal paste. I did not put fresh paste on the other one because it was in my system, so I just used it. Uh, so I would just say, I mean, could even have a little bit of dust in there. So I'm going to say overall, there's really no difference between these two. Um, the performance is roughly going to be the same under load, but to his uh, sort of uh, what he was wondering, is it worse? Well, it's definitely not worse than a standard 360 AIO. It's on par and we're showing slightly better. But like I said, we could kind of throw this up to like margin of error and some basic other factors. Um, I'm just going to say they're roughly the same. And uh, yeah, so a bit of a nothing burger, but I found it kind of interesting. I did like the fact that the way that this uh, the Arctic Freezer is set up where you just have two plugs instead of having to either daisy chain all the RGB or using hub controllers and a bunch of other junk that I really, really don't like. It's all put through the actual tubing by the water block. So this way it's just right there by your motherboard headers. Super convenient. Um, if the pricing is close enough to a more budget friendly AIO like the uh, Aqua Fusion, I would spend probably an extra 20 bucks just not to hassle with any of that stuff. However, I got my Aqua Fusion for $90 and I know the standard Enermax, it, it, I forgot the name on it. Um, it. It doesn't look as cool, doesn't have that sort of mirroring effect and the uh, LEDs on the fans aren't quite as nice. But that one's on sale for like 80 bucks sometimes on Newegg. I'll put a link to that one down in the video description down below. I've used those a lot here recently. I have a 120 millimeter version and here I use 240s on builds for customers because they're always on sale. 
yeah, they're a little bit more hassle to set up, but the prices are so good. Now, the Arctic Liquid Freezer, that was $160 when I picked it up on Amazon. So that's significantly more money. If it was coming in around 120 bucks, maybe 110, sure. You know, like an extra $20 over what I pay for the Aqua Fusion from Enermax, totally be worth it. Um, but if you're spending the extra money thinking you're going to get better cooling, well, I can tell you that's not the case. You're gonna get pretty much the same cooling performance as you would from just a regular AIO uh, from a reputable vendor. So Enermax is a big brand. They've been around forever. If you get like an MSI or a Corsair or something like that, it should perform relatively the same, right? Deep cool, those guys, right? Uh, if you get some of the little brands that nobody's known, heard of, you know, you could try it out. If it does well, keep it. If not, make sure you have a return policy. I wouldn't try a brand that you couldn't return if it didn't work out right. Uh, but yeah, I wouldn't be spending a premium on this cooler uh, as that seems to be how they're priced most of the time. However, the 320 version, the 320 millimeter or 420 millimeter version rather was on sale the other day for $110. Like, that's kind of a no brainer, right? For uh, 420 AIOs for 110 bucks. Yeah, that's a darn good deal. And, you know, sorry if you missed it. I'm sure they're going to go back on sale uh, this holiday season. So keep an eye out for that. If you can fit the larger AIO, might as well go that route, right? Um, so these things do go on sale, but the regular price at $160, 100% not worth it. Cooling performance, roughly on par with, like I said, just a standard 100. 80 to $100 AIO cooler. So, all right, guys, hope that answers that. If you were in the market for any of this stuff, links are down below. If you could use those, that does help support the channel. And once again, I do want to give a shout out to Panicpa for uh, funding this particular video. So user, another user funded video, which is really great. Thank you so much. Uh, normally, I would never test this out because it's not super interesting to me. But the community, I think, might want to know this if they're like, yeah, I'll spend the extra 50 bucks. This is what all the tech tubers are using and recommending. Save the 50 bucks. Use the affiliate links down below. There you go. Um, so, alrighty, guys, that'll do it for me here today. Hope this was helpful. If you like the video, smash the like button, subscribe, all the YouTube stuff. Thank you so much, and I will catch you guys in the next video.